Hello learners, welcome to this course on Embedded System Design using AT89C51 Microcontroller. In this tutorial, I will be discussing about on how to interface a servo motor with AT89C51 Microcontroller. See a servo motor, it can rotate with great precision, which means I can position the shaft of a servo motor at a particular angle with high precision. It may not rotate at high speed but the positioning of the servo motor can be done very precisely. So depending upon the power scheme whether it is a AC or DC we can term it as a DC servo motor or AC servo motor. So here I show a typical servo motor which can rotate 180 degrees. So if we see the basic construction of a servo motor, it consists of a DC motor. In order to reduce the speed of a DC motor, a gear system is used and the gear system is connected to the shaft. So the position of the shaft is measured using a potentiometer and this measured shaft position is compared with the user input shaft position. Any variation in the measured shaft position and user input shaft position that error signal will be used for adjusting the supply of voltage or current to a DC motor. So once the shaft position and the user input shaft position are same, the error signal will be zero, then there will not be any adjustment to the DC motor. So thereby that particular position will be retained. So thereby we can be able to get high precise shaft position. If we see a servo motor it has three lines. A red line is nothing but a VCC. Brown line is a ground line and there is an orange line which is your PWM signal. So the shaft position can be obtained using this PWM signal. Pulse width modulated signal. So in if I take a 180 degree servo motor, if I want the servo to position at minus 90 degree, then we should provide an on time of 600 microseconds. To move the shaft to plus 90 degrees, we need to provide an on time of 2400 microseconds. And to make the servo to come to zero degree, we have to provide an on time of 1500 microseconds. So by varying the on time of a square wave, we can be able to change the shaft position. So the frequency of our servo motor can be adjusted in such a way that the on time gets varied thereby the shaft position also gets varied. So here I typically show different square waves with the different duty cycle. So out of a total time period for the 50 percentage of the time we have on time which is called as 50 percentage duty cycle. Same way for the total time period if I have 10 percentage of the time on time it is called as 10 percentage duty cycle similarly for 30 percentage and 70 percentage. By varying the on times we can be able to change the shaft position. So in this tutorial I will be discussing about on interfacing a servo motor with AT89C51 microcontroller. So I am going to interface a servo motor and the PWM line is connected to port 2.0 and I am going to use two switches one for enabling clockwise rotation another for enabling anti-clockwise rotation. So the two switches are connected to port 3.0 and port 3.1. We are going to use Micro C Pro for 8051 for writing our embedded C program and converting that embedded C program into a hexadecimal file. So Proteus 8 Professional will be used as a simulator where we will be building our circuit, importing the hexadecimal file and check the logic of our program. So here I show a typical circuit diagram where I have connected the oscillator circuit with 10 MHz crystal to your XTAL1 and the XTAL2 pin of your microcontroller. There is a reset circuitry connected to the reset pin. 
So when, by default, this reset pin will be at logic zero. Whenever we close the switch, the reset pin will go to high. Thereby, reset operation will take place. And we have connected a servo motor. The PWM line, the center line of your servo motor is connected to port 2.0. Other two lines are connected to a supply. And I have connected two switches. One for enabling the clockwise movement of servo. Another for enabling anti-clockwise movement. The pins are, the switches are connected to port 3.0 and 3.1. So in the programming part, I am going to define three functions. One for moving the servo motor in clockwise direction. One for moving the servo motor in anti-clockwise direction. And one for stopping the servo motor. So in the main program, I initialize the ports. Port 2.F0 where we have connected the PWM line of your servo motor is configured as an output pin by providing 0 to it. By providing 1 to port 3.F0 and port 3.F1 we are configuring the switch to be an input port pin. So in a while loop I am going to check whether the switch connected to port 3.F0 is pressed. If it is pressed I am going to move the servo motor in clockwise direction. If second switch port 3.F1 is pressed, we are going to move the servo motor in anti-clockwise direction. If both the switches are pressed or both the switches are not pressed, we are going to stop the servo motor. So in the subroutine servo clock, I am going to put this port 2.F0 to be 1 and this one for one will be retained for 600 microsecond on time and 19,400 microsecond off time. So the total time period is 20,000 microsecond which is nothing but your 20 millisecond. So the PWM frequency will be 50 hertz. So when I execute this code port 2.f0 to be 1 for 600 microseconds on time, 0 for 19,400 microseconds on time the servo motor shaft will go to minus 90 degree. Then after one seconds, I am going to change the on time for 1500 microseconds and 18500 microseconds off time. So it will go to zero degree. Then after one second, again I am going to change the on time to be 2400 microseconds, off time to be 17600 microseconds. Thereby the servo will move to plus 90 degree. So that, that is how the servo motor will move in clockwise direction. Minus 90, 0, plus 90. In case of anti-clockwise, first on time of 2400 microsecond, off time of 17600 microsecond. So the shaft will be at minus 90 degree, sorry, plus 90 degree. After one second, it goes to 0 degree with the on time of 1500 microseconds. Then again after one second it goes to minus 90 where the on time is for 600 microseconds. In a servo stop subroutine we are going to stop the servo motor. Now let us go and build the circuit in proteasite environment. Here you can see the oscillator circuit is connected. Reset circuit is connected, a servo motor is connected to port 2.0 and there are two switches, one for enabling servo in clockwise movement and another for servo in anti-clockwise movement. We try to build the program in micro C Pro for 8051 where I have three functions, servo clock, servo anti-clock and servo stop. Configure the port lines accordingly, then check which switch is pressed. So in this case, the switch connected to port 3.f0 is pressed, then it will rotate in clockwise direction. If port 3.f1 is pressed, it will rotate in anti-clockwise direction, otherwise it will be stopped. So below I have given the subroutine for servo clock, servo anti-clock and servo stop function. Once program is written, we need to build the circuit so that the code can be converted into an hexadecimal file. Once it is done, we can go to Proteus, upload that 
hexadecimal file to the microcontroller. Right click the IC, edit properties, select the appropriate hexadecimal file and select the appropriate clock frequency. Press one. Now let us look at how the circuit works by pressing the play button. So right now it is at minus 90 degree. So when I press clockwise movement, you can see it will go to plus 90 and stop. So when I press anti-clockwise, it will start from plus 90, it will go back to your minus 90. So depending upon the condition of the switch, the servo motor will rotate either in clockwise direction or in anti-clockwise direction. So that is how we can interface and servo motor with 89C51 microcontroller. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more technical. Thank you.